our study of Daniel chapter 9. So let's go ahead and ask the Lord to bless these requests and uh, bless this day in, in his house of worship. God, we love you. We thank you for a wonderful day. Uh, Lord, we thank you so much that you've given us a way to heaven through Jesus. And Father, we're so thankful that we have our home reserved, a mansion will reserve for us so that we get to worship and adore you for eternity. Lord, in peace and paradise. God, we're so thankful for the hope of heaven. And, uh, Lord, we're so thankful for prayer today. Lord, lots mentioned today on prayer. God, I pray that you'd help us as a people to pray to you, to praise you more and more. Lord, so much needs to be prayed upon for our country, for our families, for our church, for our city. Lord, we know that prayer changes things. <coughs> Lord, we pray this morning that you hear our request for these folks. Would you have a hand upon each and every one of these needs for our ministry. Lord, we pray you just be with Carol's uh, niece, Tammy's family, for Bobby, Randy, and our friends Manny and Charles as they are struggling right now. Would you put your arms around them? And Lord, just continue to watch over the boys. And uh, Lord, uh, their father in law, Dave, that's uh, having this heart surgery, that you just help him. Uh, Lord, for our family with this plumbing issues, that you just help us get resolved tomorrow. And Lord, you heal, strengthen Josiah. And there's Peggy Ovaldo and her family, it's Janice Health, and for the little family, and Cindy for her back pain, and Marissa, Rosia, Brittany, Dave, Doug, and Liz. Father, praying for rain, for Sandy and Greg, for healing and health with Vita and her family, uh, for Tammy's Uncle Mike, bless Tom, and for his heart, for his health, and Dot Mac, and for Candy, just watch over them, and Charlotte and her family, God, pour your blessing upon them, as Gail and Bob as he travels for work. Miss Kat for her health and for Dylan, for April's children to be saved. Fred, Father, for his family and for Larry Stagg's family. For friend Donnie and his sister Joy, that you heal her body. And for Alan, Leroy, Kat, Donnie, Charity, these um, unspoken requests, Lord, which you just have your hand upon them. I think of our Patriot Day tomorrow as we uh, remember those who lost their loved ones in uh, September 11th bombings. God, there are young children that are now grown, that are missing their uh, parents. There are spouses that are still widows, but missing their loved ones. Lord, comfort them through this day and this time, and uh, Lord, just continue to bless our country. I pray for Miss Jen and her sister, Lord, that you have your hands upon her and heal her and the baby. And Lord, we just watch over these requests, I pray. Just give us a great time of study, and may encourage our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> all right. Let's go ahead and sing song number 36. Oh, come, all ye faithful. Song number 36. We'll sing the first and third verse of Oh, come, all ye faithful. Daniel, and hope and pray that this study will be an encouragement to your hearts 
Um, in the bulletins you saw this morning, the verse of the day, I would say, it's going to be everywhere, all over the place. And uh, it's also going to be our Wednesday night Bible study. Uh, a few weeks ago, Charity was uh, reading her Bible, and she uh, really just hit me with something that, man, it's just not left my mind. And she was saying that, you know, her Bible study that day was just to meditate on these two verses, 1 Thessalonians uh, chapter 5, I believe it's 15 and 16 or 14 and 15, uh, rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing. Her heart's desire that morning was that those words would be on her mind throughout the day. And ever since she said that, it's been on my heart, my mind, that we would have a deeper relationship with God. Uh, folks, we as church people believe that God wants us to be religious. He wants us to do this prayer at this point in time of the day, he wants us to give this much every day, and he wants us to do this at a certain time every day. Uh, we can think of folks that are a Muslim. They have certain times that they pray, and they have the same prayer that they pray every day. And their belief is that Allah is pleased with that religious exercise. And many folks take that into religion. Uh, I'm not trying to be critical of Catholic theology, Catholic doctrine, but um, Catholics are very much into the idea of you say the same prayer at the same time over and over and over again. And it's this idea of I'm doing, 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 and God's going to be pleased as I do it at this point in time. It, it becomes a religious exercise. Sometimes prayer becomes religious, where we pray at church, we pray in the morning, we pray at mealtime. But folks, what God desires, I want you to get this in your head, okay? Everybody, please, please understand this. God doesn't want us to be religious. God desires for us to have a relationship. Do you understand that? I'm married to my wife, okay? She doesn't desire, and I don't think anyone in this room desires, for your spouse or your loved one to just show you attention at certain parts of the day and then to just go away. That's religion. That's not going to help my relationship. My wife wants a what? Constant relationship with me. Where I am talking to her in the morning, and I'm texting her as I'm at work, and then when we come home, we're communicating, and before bed, we're communicating with each other. That's called a relationship. And this passage of scripture of rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, is the idea to understand that God desires a deep relationship with him. And in Daniel chapter 9 is a man who had a deep relationship with God. And with this deep relationship came some amazing results from his prayer life. And folks, if you're here this morning and you're like, God doesn't hear my prayer that I pray every day. Same prayer, every day, all day, every day. And you don't see God answering your prayers. It's possible that your prayers have become religion. And they're nothing to him. But God wants us to have a relationship with him. So that our prayers are not just like some I need from God. It's a God, I'm coming to you, to your presence, because I love you. And I want to spend time with you. So Daniel chapter 9 is a sincere, sweet passage of scripture. And I look forward to spending the next four weeks as we look at next week, the study. And then the prayer, God's answer for the prayer, and then the vision. I don't look forward to this passage of scripture. Uh, matter of fact, I don't know if I'm going to skip it all together or whatever. But the end of Daniel chapter uh, 9 is the passage of the 70th week. Um, I have some disagreements with what most people believe this passage of scripture to mean. Um, so pray for me for the next four weeks as I really begin to talk to my father-in-law about this passage and 
but uh, this is a prophecy that many preachers and pro prophetic people who are smarter than I uh, tend to make it out to be a passage referring to um, the tribulation. Uh, I have a disagreement with that, but uh, we'll get there. All right. Before we get to the difficult passage, let's get to some good passages. And so this is a favorite passage of Daniel. Uh, many people would say, well, Daniel's a great book of the Bible because it sees Daniel freed from the lion's den. And it sees Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego saved from the fiery furnace. And we see uh, all the answered prayers and miracles that God gives Daniel. Um, but I like this passage of scripture because it's something that each and every one of us can experience every day. And it's answered prayer. Most of us are never going to be thrown into a lion's den. Most of us are never going to be thrown into a fiery furnace. But every one of us in this room this morning is going to need God to answer a prayer. And God answers Daniel's prayer in Daniel chapter 9. And so we're going to look at Daniel chapter 9. We're going to read through the entire passage. And I'll spend about five minutes wrapping it up. And I hope and pray, folks, that... As we study this today, we get just read to the passage that you will desire to be back here for the next four weeks as we really spend time looking into Daniel's prayer. And so here we go in Daniel chapter 9, starting in verse 1. We're going to read the entire chapter and then uh, kind of put it all together and then uh, kind of make an application to our life. So Daniel chapter 9. In the first year of Darius, the son of Hazarus, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by my books the number of the years wherewith the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet. And we'll explain a lot of this, but in the first year of Darius, is quite a few time has passed from Daniel chapter 8, where he says it was in the year of um, Hazarus, I believe. So this is a long time from Hazarus to Darius. A long time has passed between Daniel chapter 8 and Daniel chapter 9. He says to the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. And I set my face unto the Lord to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed unto the Lord and made my confession and said, O Lord, the great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandments. We have sinned, he says, and have committed iniquity, and have done wickedly, and have rebelled, even by departing from thy precepts and from thy judgments. Neither have we hearkened unto thy servants, the prophets, which spake in thy name, to our kings, our princes, our fathers, and to all the people of the land. O Lord, righteousness belongeth unto thee, but unto us confession of faces as at this day, to the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And to all Israel that are near and that are far off through all the countries, whether thou hast driven them because of their trespasses, that they have trespassed against thee. O Lord, to us belongeth confession of faith, to our kings, to our princes, and our fathers, because we have sinned against thee. To the Lord our God belong mercies and forgiveness, though we have rebelled against him. Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God to walk in his laws, which he set before us. His servants, yea, all Israel, have transgressed the law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice. Therefore the curse is poured upon us. And the oath that is written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, because we have sinned against him, and have confirmed his words which he spake against us, and against our judges that judged us, by bringing upon us great evil. For unto the whole heaven hath not been done as hath been done upon Jerusalem." As it is written in the law of Moses, all of this evil come upon us. Yet made we not our prayer before the Lord our God, that we might turn from our iniquities and understand thy truth. Therefore hath the Lord watched upon the evil and brought it upon us for our God, the righteous in all his works which he doeth. For we obeyed not his voice. And now, O Lord our God, that has brought the people forth out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and has gotten thee renowned as it is this day, we have sinned, we have done wickedly. O Lord, according to thy righteousness, I beseech thee, let thine anger and thy fury be turned away from the city of Jerusalem, thy holy mountain, because for our sins and for the iniquities of our fathers, Jerusalem and thy people are become a reproach that are all about us. Now, therefore, our God, hear the prayer of thy servant and his supplication to cause thy face to shine upon thy sanctuary that is desolate for the Lord's sake. O my God, incline thine ear and hear, open thine eyes and behold our desolations. And the city which is called by thy name, 
For we do not present our supplications before thee, for our righteousness, but for thy great mercies. O Lord, hear. O Lord, forgive. O Lord, hearken, and do defy not for thy own work's sake. O my God, for thy city and thy people are called by thy name. And he says, And while I was speaking, and my praying, and confessing my sin and the sins of my people, and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God, for the holy mountain of my God, yea, while I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening ablation, and he informed me, and talked with me, he said, O Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. At the beginning of thy supplications, the commandments came forth, and I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved. Therefore understand the matter, and consider the vision. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people, and upon thy holy city, to finish the transgression, and to make the end of sins, and to make reconciliation for iniquity. And to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment, to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Prince, shall be seven weeks, and threescore and two weeks. The street shall be built again, the wall, even in troublous times. And after threescore and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the princes shall come and destroy the city, and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with the flood. And at the end of the war, desolations are determined. And he shall confirm a covenant with many for one week. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even unto the consummation. And the determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Wow, that was a lot. A lot to, to digest that passage of scripture. And I wanted to read the entire passage as a whole before we begin to dissect it week for week. And this passage is fairly self-explanatory. Uh, Daniel has a question for God. He prays, and God gives him an answer. And folks, I believe very much, and, and the passage explains, the reason God answered Daniel's prayer is because Daniel was greatly beloved of God. Daniel had a deep relationship with the Lord. And he wanted there to be peace, and he wanted there to be harmony in his relationship, and so he confessed his sin, and he praised the Lord. And folks, the application here is the necessity of prayer, repentance, and praise in our life, so that we might not be religious people. Oh God, bless this food to our body, amen. Oh God, I come before you again, blah, 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 amen. That, that means nothing to God. It's empty. God wants us to have an intimate relationship with Him so that we too would be considered greatly beloved. And those of us that have a greatly beloved relationship with God are going to see our prayers answered. And so I close with, once again, this important passage that God has laid upon our heart for the church this week. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 and 17. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing. Rejoicing evermore just simply means, number one, we have an attitude of prayer, of praise. That we would be content and thankful for what God has done for us. God has been very good to us. Amen? Amen. I know you may not feel like it today. I don't feel like it today. I feel awful after yesterday uh, and the day before. Uh, but guess what? God is still good. And I have much to praise Him for today. Salvation for my church family, for my home, for my spouse, for my family. You know, there's the song that we sang a few weeks ago called 10,000 Reasons. 10,000 Reasons that we can praise God for today. If you were to spend time and you were to put the effort into it, I guarantee you, you could come up with 10 thousand reasons to sing and rejoice today and praise God for it. Don't you think God likes to hear how thankful you are for him? Do you like to hear it? My boss, um, Mr. Ed Will at the CSD, is one of the very first bosses I've ever had, and I've worked for many pastors, who will consistently come to me and say this, Cody, I'm thankful for you. Cody, I'm glad for what you're doing here at the CSD. You know how that makes me feel? 
That makes me feel appreciated. That makes me feel like what I'm doing is, is actually making a difference. So many churches that I've worked in, I didn't get that. The only time I ever saw or heard from the pastor was when I was in trouble. <laughs> and I had done something wrong. And I told my boss, I said, I was the same guy at those churches that I came here at the CSD. I showed up. I did my job. I tried to go over and above what was asked of me. Yet you're the only person that seems to appreciate it. And you know what that makes me want to do? It makes me want to work harder. It makes me want to do more for him because he appreciates it. Folks, the same is true with God. God likes to hear how we appreciate him and how we are thankful for what he's doing in our lives. And you know what that makes him want to do? More for us. If you appreciate what you've been given, he will continue to apply blessings into your life. And as we praise him and thank him and, and, and just appreciate all he's done, folks, then we begin to pray to him more. Pray without ceasing. What does that mean, Pastor Cody? That just means constantly throughout the day. Asking God to bless this. And not a, not a, listen, this is not an organized prayer. This is not just some religious exercise or some counting of beads. This is just a, hey God, it's me, Cody. Just want to let you know I love you. Uh, I see someone over there that could use some help. Would you bless that person? God, it's me again. I, I'm, I'm having a constant state of prayer. Uh, Lord, I sinned against you today. I sinned against you just now. Forgive me. So you sin, Cody? Yeah, of course I sin. I'm human. I'm man. I have things that thoughts and things that I don't don't belong in my life. No one's perfect. Okay? You shouldn't put me on some pedestal like I'm some special, super spiritual person. No, I'm just regular, old, Marvin Cody Frazier, just like you are. Okay? God, I need your help. I forgive me. God, this person needs your help. Lord, I pray that you'd be with my request and, and help me with this. It's not a religious thing, folks. This prayer is a relationship to where you can just go to God and just lay down your burdens with him constantly throughout the day. Not on your knees, not counting beads, not thinking about what you're praying, just talking to God. Not a rehearsed thing, simply a revelation of your heart and desire for God. I wanted to read this passage before we finish. In James chapter 5. Daniel's would go right in here as well. Is there any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over him. Anointing with oil, oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Lord shall raise him up. And he have committed sins. They shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another. Pray one for another. That you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man. Of a greatly beloved man. Like Daniel said. Availeth much. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are. Yet he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years. And in six months. And he prayed again. And the heaven gave rain. And the earth brought forth her fruit. What's that passage saying Pastor Cody? It says Elijah and Daniel were nothing special. They weren't like some super spiritual person that you could never attain to. They were just ordinary, regular folk like you and me. But they were beloved by God. And their prayers were answered and God blessed them in a mighty way. Folks, may we draw near to God this week and ask Him to do grand things that change the globe. May we this week go to God and draw near to him. How much? Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. Meaning every day, all day. And ask him to do grand things in your life. And grand things in your neighbor's life. And grand things in your enemy's lives. Grand things that change the globe. And may we have lots of things to praise God for next Sunday. Lord, let's pray. Thank you for the chance to study your word. Lord, I look forward to the study of Daniel chapter 9, where I pray we'll be back. And God, I pray that this study will just encourage us to have a deep prayer life. And God, when we have questions, when we have problems, that we will go to you, and that you would answer them and show us great and mighty things. Lord, bless this service this morning. May you speak to our hearts, or bring visitors in. Lord, I pray that even lost folks would come in this morning, realize their need for Jesus, and accept him as their Savior. We pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, folks. <clears throat>